before these two dams were built, this stretch of river was one of the longest and finest sections of white water on the East Coast. For us, that means when we portaged around the dam, it was a long way down to river level. So we had to bring the boats down this hill. And now we're going down some steps and then following the path down there somewhere. on my front two bags in my left hand one in my right <sighs> trying to avoid the crop of poison ivy they're growing here Lord, don't trip. That'd be some good action video. Find the water, huh? Show me where the river is. Take me to the river. Take me to the river. Kind of muddy down there. <laughs> Ollie's legs are muddy. Ollie found some mud. gonna be a bitch. Boats over this thing. And Staying down there. Mm, I was wondering if he was going to come up again. <laughs> Ready. One, two. Let's 
gonna be a bitch. It's too wide. That's what we just came around. Going down there. Starting back on the river after that portage around that big ass dam. Off of a big wide reservoir with a strong headwind onto an ice river with some current again, finally. I-93 crossing from Littleton area over into Vermont. Day seven, correction. <laughs> Approximately one tenth of the way there. <laughs> Yeah. Our next campsite was on Stevens Island, but we didn't know which side of the island it was on, so we split up. You went down one side, I went down the other. It was <laughs> on my side. How is it? It's no, really nice. Really nice. Yeah. this for luxury. <laughs> Hopefully you heard those loons going loony.
one hour into day eight. Early morning portage. Not too hard. Oh boy, that looks pretty precarious. The people are there. There we go, Ollie. Bam. Excuse me. Okay, here we go, Ollie. Stay still. Yeehaw! Stay on one side, okay, Ollie? One side or another. Pick a side. Piece of cake. It's fun, huh, Ollie? into the narrows. A bunch of bend, narrow bends right before getting to Woodsville. A little bit of fast water. Hopefully it's deep enough that we don't have to get out and push. Let's take a look. Hmm. See anything yet? Yeah, huh. Looks pretty shallow. I think we might be getting out. I guess I'll go where he's going. He isn't hitting anything yet. There we go. This will be fun. Yeah, good. Enough water. Uh-oh, he ran aground.
like this, don't you, Ollie? end of Sunday, day eight, we are at our campsite. That's, uh, this is where we're stocked. Let's take a walk up. There we go. <laughs> the deer fly is driving nuts. Here's a, our tents. Charlie's and mine. It's a nice big site. Two big tables. All of our stuff. <laughs> There's is what we pack and unpack every four day. Four times a day. <laughs> yeah. Over there is a cornfield. Nice big trees. Oh, he's being driven crazy by the deer flies. This is an abutment from Beddo Bridge, which was the last in a line of covered bridges going over this river in this area, destroyed by a windstorm in 1979. You can 
tell that at some point after that, there was a high flood stage. So that is one massive tree that was lifted up there. And over next to it is now Bedell Bridge State Park. Try it. Sitting here at a deli, walked up into town, Bradford, Vermont. Heart set on a hamburger and a cold beer at the local eatery, sitting right on the creek. Damn thing is closed on Monday. So now we just gotta get a sub and a beer and walk down to the gazebo and eat it. It's about 98 degrees. Ice cream cone too. It is having a whopper of a thunderstorm. We are waiting out the rain here in Bradford, Connecticut. First thunderstorm type rain we've had. We were lucky to call it quits early. We were coming into Bradford to get a bite to eat and a beer. We got those. Set up camp at a nice public boat ramp. And uh, now just escaping the rain in our respective tents. A lot of thunder and lightning. No big winds so far. Hell of a hard day against a headwind. As you'll see or did see in the videos. Twice we had to get out of the boats and walk up the side of the river pulling the boats behind us. Oh well. Another day, another few miles. Yeah. <sighs>
Day 10, paddling in the rain. Ollie doesn't like it at all. Good boy. Luckily it stopped raining by the time we reached Roaring Brook campsite. Set up camp, everything was damp, including the wood which made it hard to make a fire. We finally were able to do that. We were joined just a little while later by a couple in kayaks. Very nice, we had a nice visit with them. The campsite was plenty big enough for all four of us. This is Wednesday, day 11 on the river. We are going to reach Hanover area today. Less footage of the river itself because it pretty much all looks the same at this point. So, I'm not going to bore you with that. got to the campground, Patchen's Point, the three of us walked into town three miles. I wanted to show, uh, um, not Ollie, <laughs> I wanted to show Charlie Hanover and Dartmouth College. think of Hanover, I think of Dartmouth. When I think of Dartmouth, I think of rowing. I had already arranged for a ride-along with uh, one of the coaches of the Upper Valley Rowing Foundation, large group offering rowing to the general public. And the facility was just across the river from the campsite. So I paddled over there early the next morning. Now 
it turns out, once the rowers got there, they were missing a coxswain. Well, as luck had it, I had a little bit of experience with that. Two, can you take a stroke or two? Day 12, morning of day 12, Thursday, passing through Hanover, there's the Dartmouth Crew Boathouse. And we're back to a headwind. Pretty damn nice boathouse. That's what money can buy. It's day on. Looking for a place to just get off the water and stretch our legs and go pee. Haven't been able to find anything. Interesting, Holly. Dead end. I'd say out there somewhere. Huh. Jeez. Jesus Christ. Really nothing here. Tadpoles. I'm sorry, Ollie. Get out and step in those weeds. We can't find. site that is supposed to be here is not here. So we're just going to make one up here on this sandy point of an island. Burnaps Island. There's supposed to be Burnaps Island campsite. Right next to the island. Not on it, but next to it. So we've had it for the day. It's hell of a day, which I will explain later. <coughs> so we're calling it a day. Ollie, you want to come? 
Come over here. Over here. Uh, no, that's it. Keep going. Good, 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 good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Right out here. Okay, ready to jump? Come on. Come on. Ready? Ready? Jump. jump. I'll jump. Jump. Good. See if we can get up. Good. <clears throat> I should have made you swim across, Ollie. There's Charlie going after my boat. A suitable ending for a really shitty day. The water has come up super fast. And Ollie saved the day. Ollie was barking at it. Ollie has earned her keep. <laughs> yeah. Good boy, Ollie. Too much turbulence? There it sure is. Can you imagine those little rapids we came down earlier? Yes. That'd be fun now. Sumner Falls. Nice class three rapids during normal water levels. But with this low water, it wasn't much more than class one except for a few places. Still, it was more than we had done, so we decided to go down it one at a time.
This is the fastest water I've ever done in a canoe. So, hopefully, I'll stay dry. Speed up. Going down that middle chute right there. to the right. Piece of cake. Says here.
Cornish Winslow Windsor Cornish Windsor Covered Bridge. day that we have a strong headwind, it calms down at 6 o'clock every single day. That's about when we stop paddling. Today, we decided to keep paddling beyond 6 o'clock. Guess what? No calm. If anything, the goddamn headwind is stronger now than three hours ago. Waves. That is not a boat wind. Those are waves do the fucking wind. So here we are. Next campsite. These damn things are getting going from bad to worse in terms of access. <sighs> This is the frickin' path to the campsite. <clears throat> Filled with poison ivy. Look at this. Unbelievable. And I got about a 20 minute walk up to the campsite. To make matters worse, the campsite was already occupied by about six guys. We squeezed in, and since we were both very tired and very frustrated, we were in bed before 9 o'clock. Our intention was to get up very early, get on the water before the wind had a chance to come up. Getting an early start, quarter of six. First time ever we've had a headwind before 10 a.m. Of course, now we have a headwind as we start. And gloomy skies. These waves, again, not caused by a, a boat going by. Waves caused by the wind. Frickin' foot in this goddamn head. Look at this shit. And we can't pull off to shore because this is the shore.
at the weather report, we found that this wind was going to be even stronger for the next three days. We had already about decided uh, that we couldn't keep going. That put the nail in the coffin. We couldn't deal with this wind anymore. So we stayed here for the night and next morning headed back upriver. Day 15, two weeks from the start. We are admitting defeat from this wind and letting us take, letting it take us back upstream to the point of extraction. be able to ride these waves. <laughs> Those are the cattails we just barely made it past yesterday. Still blowing. Now I'm just floating past without paddling. Being blown past. So this was it. Our grand adventure was coming to a disappointing end. When we first realized that we could not complete the entire river in less than a month, two or three, we started setting more realistic goals for ourselves. We would at least make it to Hartford, we said. Then we would at least make the Massachusetts border. Once this wind became a consistent and constant presence, Bellows Falls became the goal. But in the end, the wind won. I hate wind. The wind may have forced us off the water, and it did make the last several days an exercise in futility and frustration. But we did have two weeks on the water, camping in beautiful locations, enjoying the beauty and the presence of this immortal river. I've always loved rivers. They are both always changing and always constant, perpetual.